the, their participation to give a contribute for a best uh, society and for a better uh, future. Do you have our presentation? <laughs> but I can continue t t uh, uh, also to congratulate uh, the organization. I'm not seeing the presentation. <laughs> to congratulate the organization for the um, for the the choice that they have made for the for the theme of this um, of uh, that are guiding all this event that is the future. Uh, actually, I cannot remember a theme more pertinent or a theme more present that uh, talk about the future. Future is uh, right here, is uh, right now. It is coming fast uh, and it's uh, producing a huge uh, impact in our societies, in our lives, and for sure in our uh, future work and in our jobs. And uh, why, what, what is happening here? <laughs> Okay, and uh, why this is happening so fast uh, and we are having so uh, fast changes in our society? We are having, it's already was mentioned by the previous speaker, we are having um, a, a, um, a combined uh, items that are happening like uh, digitalization, automation, globalization, uh, new technologies, uh, robotic, artificial intelligence, climate changes, and uh, uh, nanotechnology, all these are happening and uh, are, um, are creating a cocktail that are provoking uh, profound changes at a rapid spill and scale in our organization as a society. And uh, this means everything. This means changes in politics, changes in the unions, Changes in the way we related with uh, that kind of powers, and we are engaged in this uh, process. Changes in our uh, social and uh, economic uh, lives, in, in the way we connect with uh, each other, and uh, for sure, uh, changes also in uh, the future of work and in jobs, including uh, the numbers and the quality, as uh, was also mentioned here. Uh, according to uh, some uh, studies and reports, this one is from OCDE, it's, uh, I don't know in English the name, um, more than half of all existing jobs are expected to change significantly or completely disappear. Um, regarding this scenario, uh, there are some people that are saying that uh, these um, uh, technological advances will generate a new era of development that will create new jobs that will uh, substitute the ones that are disappearing. Uh, and there are some other people saying that uh, the, the new jobs created will not be enough to replace the, um, the occupations that uh, will turn obsolete with uh, these technological advances and all this uh, transformation. We don't have to, to choose who is right or wrong because both the most um, optimistic people and the most pessimistic people about uh, this, uh, these transformations uh, agree on the idea that uh, these uh, changes, uh, that these new uh, jobs that will be created will demand uh, new and different uh, skills uh, for sure. Uh, in fact, this uh, fourth industrial revolution as uh, it uh, is known for um, will demand uh, uh, new, new demands for the, for the needs of the labor markets uh, that is for sure, and there will be some skills that will be more demanded in the future, and there will be some skills that uh, will we'll see declining their, their importance in this new labor market. Uh, and, and we can uh, talk about uh, this, you can imagine how uh, it will be the future, 
maybe you can write in our back <laughs> what uh, what uh, will happen in this uh, in this field what will be the skills that will growing up with these changes not only technological that's why it is a revolution it's not uh, 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 um, uh, technological advances only is all about uh, the, the ways the our organization as a society are working but there will be also some skills that are now important in our labor markets that will be no more important in the in the in the future uh, according to the world economic forum uh, the skills that are growing up uh, in 2022 that is right now it's in the near future are these ones uh, analytical thinking and innovation artistic learning creativity uh, critical thinking analysis complex problem solving leadership emotional intelligence and there are some skills that uh, are now uh, employing people uh, that will be declining uh, manual dexterity um, reading writing management of personal quality control this kind of skills are uh, declining and we have a lot of data and a lot of, of uh, studies and researches from uh, many other organizations that are saying uh, quite the same. Uh, here is one from uh, World Economic Forum that uh, presents the top 10 skills in 2020 and uh, also the top 10 skills that were demanded by markets in 2015. We can see uh, more or less the, the, the same information that in the previous uh, picture, but what you, we can see here is that it, it's happening very fast. Uh, only five years separating uh, these uh, two pictures, and we can see that there is a lot of transformations in our lives that, uh, that we are assisting uh, and that are uh, having impacts in uh, our labor markets with a very uh, fast speed and uh, with a scale that we didn't uh, see uh, before. And, uh, and this one is a more uh, a fantastic picture that you can uh, found, find out more after this, maybe consulting the Institute for the Future. Uh, you can uh, know more about uh, what, uh, what uh, these kind of organizations are saying about the future one in what it means about the, um, the market. And um, for us to having a population that uh, can be able to face these uh, new challenges uh, will demand a lot on the educational and training uh, systems uh, that of course they have to change, they have to be adapted to these all uh, transformations and it will not be easy having in mind that uh, actually the, our educational system in most of our countries are quite the same as they were in the previous uh, industrial revelations. We have the same school that we have in the past, uh, building, a classroom, uh, teachers, uh, students, teachers transmitting information. These kind of schools maybe uh, are not ready for this future and maybe are not uh, suitable already for our present with all these uh, uh, transformations. This can be a topic for debate uh, for the next year, maybe. We can uh, debate more about the challenge that uh, the, our education training uh, systems are facing and how they can be adapted to, the, to these uh, new, to these new um, challenges. But, uh, but for sure, um, education uh, are must be a priority for uh, for us individuals and for us countries and the european union and it th this is why uh, education are included in the main uh, strategic uh, documents of european union uh, the 2020 with uh, some uh, quantitative education goals that are for sure important and also the European Union Youth Strategy that uh, I think you know, if you don't know, you should uh, search for it. Uh, the Youth Strategy for the next seven years until 27 
that actually has also a goal dedicated to, uh, to education in a more uh, mm, general perspective. And what I want to highlight uh, when what it comes to education is that uh, if we want to be able to face these new challenges, we have also to face uh, education in, uh, in global terms. This means considering the importance of formal education, that uh, is important for sure, but also considering the importance of the non-formal education, not as an alternative, but as an uh, uh, educative space with its own sense. And uh, with this, I finally arrived to the, to the pretext for, for being here, uh, that is the, the, the mobility and the international programs and European programs as uh, Erasmus Plus program and the European Solidarity Corp that actually are based on an uh, informal education. As you know, these uh, are the European programs to promote and support uh, the mobility of uh, young people across Europe and that are actually um, an important priority for European youth policies. Then they are mobilizing an even bigger uh, financial and political investment in, the, in this field. I can share with you some numbers that I think it is important to give you a picture. Um, the proposal that are on the table uh, is to multiply the budget for the youth fields and for this mobility program, multiply this, uh, this budget, the current budget, for three. Uh, this means uh, almost 50 billion euros for the next seven years in this program. I cannot imagine how much money is 50 billion euros, but it is a huge amount of money and uh, it is in a certain way a form of expression of this uh, European uh, priority. It's not absolutely uh, true, the idea that the budget is uh, a proportional expression of our uh, priorities, but it is in a certain way, uh, a budget is uh, an expression of our options and choices, and, uh, and it's very significantly that uh, the choice of European Union is to multiply this budget by three in a context of uh, budget retractions with uh, as a result of the Brexit uh, process. And uh, why, why uh, are European Union investing uh, so much in these um, youth um, programs? because they are good for communities, because they are good for the values, and because they are good for the skills. Uh, 